Hello, everybody. We will begin in one minute. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar featuring Fortress Power and Lumen. Our speakers for today are Alex Lepore, Fortress Power's West Coast Sales Manager, and Kevin Oshia, Co-Founder and Chief Commercial Officer of Lumen. Today's presentation will be emailed to all the attendees, as well as a link of its recording. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type your question into the questions box, and we will go through as many as we can at the end of this presentation. Without any further ado, Alex, please take it away. Okay, hi everybody, hope we're all doing well. Thank you for joining us here today on this webinar. I'd also like to thank Kevin and the Illumin team for hosting this wonderful webinar today. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'll go over who we are at here at Fortress Power and some of the different battery backup options we have and a few other topics I think to help you get you on your way regarding different battery backup options, what to look out for, and some of those kind of things. So who are we? We're a lithium iron phosphate battery manufacturer making batteries for the residential and commercial space. We're based outside of Philadelphia in a small town called Southampton. You see over here on the right, this is our facility. It's a 30,000 square foot facility where we do a lot of the R&D sales and logistics. We also have two other warehouses in California in Long Beach, as you can see here on the bottom right, and as well in Miami, Florida. We have over 70 megawatt hours of installations worldwide, ranging from obviously the continental US, Canada, the Central Caribbean, South America, Europe, and Africa. So we are certainly growing and seeing a lot of interest in our battery backup options. We are also the exclusive lithium battery supplier for SEPTA, which is a local railway company here based outside of Philadelphia, and Hydro-Quebec, which is a utility company based up in Canada. We have had probably around a 300% annual growth rate thanks to all of our um, authorized installers and distributors helping promote Fortress Power and providing the safest and most affordable lithium battery backup options out there. So I want to thank all of those out there supporting our mission and helping us get on our way. So some of the distribution partners that we work with are CED Green Tech, Cranich, Fortune Energy, Northern Arizona Wind and Sun, Glen International, Renvu, Proinso, Baywa, and Wholesale Solar. For a complete list of all of our distribution partners, please check out our website at www.fortresspower.com forward slash where to buy. On our website, you can also find other case studies and blogs about Fortress Power if you'd like to learn more about other people's stories and their experience with working with us. And we also have a few financing partners for those that are looking into different financing options for their battery storage. So I'm sure you guys have heard of companies like Lone Pal, SunGage Financial, Enerbank, Lightstream, and Sunlight Financial. So please inquire to your representative at one of these financing companies to learn more about financing Fortress Power Equipment and things along those lines. So to dive right into it, uh, there's been a lot of growth with lithium and especially batteries as a whole. You know, if you were to look 10 to 15 years ago, you'd see the battery space was primarily full of a lot of lead acids. Um, there was like the saltwater batteries that had some popularity for a, quite a bit of while. But now 
a lot of the focus is shifting towards lithium iron. And, and I want to kind of present on why this is, why people are making that shift, and some of the benefits of going with a lithium iron phos phosphate battery in comparison to a lead acid or another lithium solution. So the first thing is that the lithium has a very long lifespan. You can get a lot of life cycles using lithium iron phosphate. It has a low energy cost in the long-term usage because of that long lifespan. It has a 98% round trip efficiency. It's very compact and lightweight. There is no ventilation needed. So with some lead acid solutions, there is needed for ventilation. This is not the case with a phosphate battery. There is no maintenance, so you're not filling up water like in a flooded lead acid. There is no maintenance you have to perform with the lithium with this lithium solution. You can discharge this 100%, so you can use 100% of the power. So here you'll see our Evolt 18.5, which I'll be showcasing here in the next couple of slides. I also have our LFP 10, I believe, here on the right. So this is meaning you could use theoretically all 18.5 kilowatt hours of the Evolt should it be needed. It also has fast charging and discharging capabilities thanks to the BMS, another topic which I'll cover later in this presentation. And it has a more consistent discharge powder power because of that chemistry in there. You can put out consistent amperages for those AC loads that the customer might have. So looking at a brief performance comparison of lithium versus the traditional lead acid, obviously the lithium is a little bit longer lasting. There's more, you know, more ability to power more loads in your home. An interesting thing that I've seen is that lead acid capacity actually drops when your output is increasing. So if you guys take a look here at this chart in the bottom left, you'll see this green line is LFP. You can see that as your current goes up, let's say they are powering the, the loads in the house in the event of an outage. Their current's going up, but the capacity is still staying the same. So you're getting the same amount of capacity, although you're powering more loads in the house. Now, for example, if you look at the other three lines here, you see we have a flooded lead acid, an AGM, and then also a gel battery. So what I typically get a lot of questions on is, okay, well, you know, flooded lead acid may have a high capacity, but as soon as you start pushing out current to those loads, your capacity is dropping. So you're actually getting less bang for your buck. You're getting less power out of that lead acid battery than a lithium because of the, basically the chemical makeup of this flooded lead acid or AGM or a gel. So this is why I think this is one of the factors in why lithium is becoming the new standard for battery storage, because you can power the loads in the home or in whatever situation, whether it's off-grid, time of use, self-use, or emergency power, and you're not going to lose your capacity. You're going to be able to have consistency when sizing your projects. Very important. And I did mention the space comparison. So lithium is one third the size and one third the weight of an AGM battery. So you can see here we have two of our Evolt 18.5s. We recommend an 80% depth of discharge. So this would get you around 30 kilowatt hours worth of backup just with these two units. Now I can imagine if this was a lead acid solution, you would see a whole line of batteries, maybe even from this wall over here on the right, going all along the, all along the ground um, right before it gets into the doorway. So the benefit of lithium is that if there are space constraints, if there are, you know, you're going down at the stairs or anything like that, lithium is a very good solution to kind of keep all your ducks in a row, make sure things are organized in that kind of way. So that's why I think a lot of lithium is really becoming more popular in comparison to AGM because it's less space for the same amount of power. So if you look at lithium versus lead acid, I think it's pretty clear the ad advantages to why lithium is more preferred. Now, if we look at some of the other chemistries on the market, we have a lithium ion or a nickel manganese cobalt. We also have a lithium polymer. So this lithium polymer would be like the battery in your phone, for example. And the lithium ion is typically what we've seen in some other different battery manufacturers like Tesla, LG, Chem, or Panasonic. Some of the key features of going with a phosphate battery is that it's very safe. It is eco-friendly because it does not have that added element of cobalt. So it is able to be recycled. If you want to learn more about recycling, please check out Battery Recyclers of America. They have, I think, a few EPA-treated facilities across the country where you can go recycle these batteries after their lifespan. They are more thermally stable, and there is more life cycles, 6,000 life cycles, in comparison to 3,000 life cycles over here with the NMC chemistry. And as I'm sure you've seen, there has been those places of thermal runaway with an NMC battery. It is much harder and more expensive to recycle because of the added element of, element of cobalt, and it certainly is not as thermally stable as a phosphate battery. Now, granted, 
different batteries require different applications and vice versa. So NMC is usually good for vehicles with high energy density needed. What do I mean by this? So imagine you have your, let's say Tesla car. You need a lot of power in that battery and that bit space to move your car from point A to point B. So that certainly makes sense. But if you're looking for something more where you're, it's a standstill system in someone's home where you need that safety, you want the long life cycle so they can power those loads in the event of an outage, let's say, this is where we see LFP. It's very good for those stationary applications like home energy storage or telecommunications, things like that. So if you look at the degradation rate of LFP, it is less than that of the NMC and LifePo, but is not as energy dense as the NMC. But I think it's just one of those kind of trade-offs where it's not as energy dense, but you do have that safety and you do have the environmentally friendly chemistry backing you up in that way. So when you're considering a battery, you're considering a lithium battery, let's say, take a look at lithium iron versus lithium ion, because there are some pretty stark differences that you should be aware of. Now, if you look at the lithium polymer over here, like the, the battery in your phone, you see this isn't really too popular. It's not really that, that high of life cycles. It's not really as safe. It's not too thermally stable. There was that whole thing with Samsung a few years ago. So that's why at Fortress Power, at the least, we've chosen to go with an iron phosphate battery in comparison to the latter over here to my right on these two. So kind of put my money where my mouth is. If you guys want to go check out this nail test video that is on YouTube, just type in LFP versus NMC nail test video. And you'll basically see here on the left, they have an LFP cell and here on the right, it's an NMC cell. So what they essentially do is they take a 10 penny inch nail and go right through the center of this bad boy. And you can see here throughout the video, there is some light smoking, things like that. They do the same thing on the right with an NMC cell. It goes full on apocalyptic. So I always like to point this in the direction of people that think lithium, they put a lithium battery, there's just, it's just more trouble to come. When in reality, you could drill a nail through the LFP cell individually and really not have any kind of consequences, unlike our friend over here on the right with the NMC cell. So keep that in mind, pass that along, LFP versus NMC nail test video. So if we basically chalk up to why lithium iron and we look at some of these different chemistries, I think the four things that we can keep in mind are the superior safety of the LFP, you know, very thermally stable, very, very able to have that high energy throughput and safety. Uh, energy throughput is essentially the total amount of energy a battery can be expected to, to store and deliver over its lifetime. So for example, over here on the right, you'll see energy throughput is 47 megawatt hours on LFP, while lithium ion or polymer can't even break 25 megawatt hours. So essentially you're able to pass more and store a lot more energy with an LFP battery versus an NMC or a lithium polymer. I did mention a long duration, so 6,000 cycles versus you know, 2,800 or 3,000 cycles. And then we have the very low energy cost. So we got the cost per kilowatt hours here is 14 cents. So if you look at the homeowner cost of a 10 kilowatt hour battery across the board, the LFP is more expensive upfront, but when you take into account those life cycles that I mentioned and cycling it every day and using it every day, you're actually breaking down the cost per kilowatt hours is half than the lithium ion and the lithium polymer solution. So this is why we've seen with the high round trip efficiency, high cycle life, the very high energy throughput, energy, uh, the iron phosphate battery is certainly a contender here um, in comparison to the ion and the polymer batteries. So now I'm gonna go over, I mentioned the EVOD here um, in a few slides ago, so I'll be going over some of the different batteries we offer, some of their applications and things along those lines. So without further ado, over here on the left, we have our Evolt 18.5. This has been so far probably our most popular product um, as it is scalable up to 220 kilowatt hours. Comes with local monitoring through an LCD display. You can see it right here. So it'll read things like your voltage, your current, your state of charge and your power. Another cool feature of this LCD display is if you guys can see these small circles here on the right hand side of the screen, that's a safety feature that connects the LCD display to the BMS. So what this helps you do is if you see, let's say one of the circles and it's LT, that means low temperature. That means when you're diagnosing and you call Fortress Power Technical Support, we know there's a low temperature sensor has gone off in the EVOL, helps us properly diagnose the problem and take those next steps. Pretty cool safety feature, I think, uh, just to keep things clear and keep the communication open. Has a large storage capacity for easy install, so you can save a lot on your balance of systems cabling and cabling costs. So instead of paralleling many small batteries together, you can have one larger battery, helps save you some money and also will save you some time. 
It's very easy to install. It has a very nice sleek look, very nice and like the gray with the wheels so you can wheel it around. It is quite heavy. So I would recommend you use the wheels. And then for those of you in California, this is the largest S-chip self-generation incentive program approved battery at 17.8 AC powers of kilowatt hours of AC. So that literally means more bang for your buck. So this is the Evol. This is probably the older brother to the E-Flex 5.4, which is our newer unit. E-Flex 5.4 is our, more of our modular approach. Comes with cell to, park, cell to pack architecture and is scalable up to 80 kilowatt hours has an IP65 rated aluminum enclosure, which means this can be installed outside. And you can put it on the floor, the wall, or into a standard shelf rack solution. This can be used in many, many different applications, like in your typical home energy storage solutions, telecommunication projects, railway, marine, and RV. This also will come with remote monitoring, closed loop communication, which I'll dive into a little bit later, and it is IoT or Internet of Things ready. It comes with an integrated heatsink for five times better thermal performance. So from anything from your smaller projects, you can consider the E-Flex 5.4, and then even for some larger residential, even maybe some small commercial projects, the Evolt 18.5 is certainly the way to go. These are both UL approved, so no problems there at all. And I certainly recommend either one of these for those of you that are really um, having a lot of different battery applications and projects and, and locations, things like that. So here are some technical specifications. I'm not going to go over all of these uh, verbatim, just a few key things I'd like to point out. All of our batteries are 48 volts. You can stack up to 12 of the E volts, like I mentioned, for around 200 kilowatt hours, and you can stack up to 15 of the E flexes for 80 kilowatt hours. The communication is a CAN and RS45 communication that comes with it. And all of our batteries come with a 10 year warranty for 6,000 cycles. Typically, I see that if you were to cycle your battery one time a day, for example, if you're cycling the E-Vault one time a day, you'd expect the lifespan to be around 12 to 15 years. So we do have a 10-year warranty, but I usually say it's the lifespan of your battery is going to well exceed your 10-year warranty, maybe in 12, 15, in some cases, depending on how you're using it, could go plus. So one key thing I like to mention is the battery management system. This is probably the most important thing in a lithium battery that you guys should be aware of when considering different battery products and you know certainly um, attaching them to certain projects. We use a relay based, it's a digital processor based battery management system. So this is essentially, it's a very reliable um, fuse and switch inside that can protect the battery cells. So this has protection from inrush current, fast charging and discharging, high capacity cell balancing and dynamic control between the units in parallel. Also has versatile protocol communication with an external devices like different softwares, things like that, and is Internet of Things ready. Now, if you look at what some of our competitors might be using as a MOSFET or essentially a piece of circuit board, it doesn't come with any of these certain features. Now, although it's lower cost, you're not getting all these features that the more robust relay based BMS that a Fortress power system uses. So whether it's Fortress or you're looking at a different battery provider, ask them, what kind of BMS do you have? How does it communicate with the battery cells? How does it communicate with the inverter? All these are very important questions. I would highly recommend you ask. BMSs are very important. So keep that in mind when you're looking at different batteries along those lines. So here's our compatible inverter list. So we are compatible with most of the well-known 48 volt chargers and hybrid inverters on the market. So I'm sure you guys see some familiar names here. We got Schneider, Outback, Magnum, SMA, Solark, Victron, Morningstar, and Midnight. The ones with the double asterisk next to, we are establishing closed communication. So we have been getting closed communication with Schneider and Solark, and we have SMA, Outback, and Victron in our sites as well. So that being said, if there is an inverter on this list, uh, an inverter that you're using that is not on this list, please contact us um, just via either our, our web or you can shoot us an email. I'll have an email for you guys at the end of the presentation and we can certainly dive into that and see if it's something that we can set up with you guys. Now, depending on your application, a lot of these can be for AC or DC coupling. So this could be AC coupling for an existing array where they might have a uh, inverter that's not compatible with our battery, so they'll AC couple it, or it could be for your brand new projects where they'll DC couple, you know, a, a Solark or a Schneider in a DC coupling format. So whether AC or DC coupling to our battery systems, you have a few options here, um, so be sure to take a look. 
So like I mentioned here, a Schneider, here's a four of our e-vaults with the Schneider system here. Like I said, we do have closed loop communication. More information on that can be found on our website underneath the resources tab on this closed loop communication. Likewise with Solark, we really like the Solark unit as well. And here you see, oh, there's a six of the e-vaults with three of the Solark 12 KWs. This is their newest one where we have them in parallel. This is probably around, if we took 15 times six, this is around a 90 kilowatt hour, maybe a little bit less kilowatt hour system. And you can see here, this would just be like a one-off, one Solark with one E-Vault. This is a pretty good standard package for most people with, you know, wanting to back up their critical loads, things like that. I would guess that this one here on the left, this larger picture, this might be, you know, a whole home backup or something along those lines. That would be my guess um, from just looking at the amount of storage that they have. You'll see here the LCD displays are all on. And so what you'll actually see is the, the display will also show how many batteries you have in parallel and they have a master and slave relationship. So one will be the, the master, the, the boss, I say, and the rest will be following behind that. And you see they just make their connections through the knockouts on the side. It's a one and a half inch knockout on the side. So they'll just put their four watt or two watt battery cables into here. And then that's how they can increase the kilowatt hour capacity. We're also working with SMA, the Sunny Islands here. You see the beautiful installation here. This is for a large, I think, off-grid project in Canada with SMA. And it looks like, I think it's seven of the E-Vaults. And then we are also working with Outback, you know, the Radian series, the Skybox. Uh, we do have, I think this is LFP10s with the Outback system. So depending on your preferred inver inverter, we certainly have compatibility. And we certainly have had a lot of experience working with these different inverters. And obviously want to thank them for all their work. Um, and helping us out and getting this closed loop communication. It certainly makes it easier for you guys installing. It makes it easy instead of putting in a bunch of parameters, it's more plug and play. So I did mention this closed loop communication. I, just, I had, a, I think it's only like two or three slides regarding the closed loop communication, because it is quite important. It's becoming an ever important thing um, between these inverters and batteries is this closed loop communication facet. So you have open loop and closed loop. Open loop, essentially means that there's no BMS or battery management system communication between the inverter and the battery. The inverter uses a manual charge setting provided by the battery manufacturer, also known as static. The lithium ion BMS must provide the final protection functions. So like those things like the overcharging or deep discharging, the BMS must provide these functions in itself. Now, the reason why a closed loop, I think, is becoming more popular, I think even price standard at this point, is because the BMS is will communicate between the inverter and the battery. They will communicate daily to make sure everything's up to par. The inverter regulates charging and discharging according to the BMS and will update dynamically live. And the inverter provides battery protection as dictated by the BMS, derating or tripping off, depending on what parameters you put into the BMS and what sort of project you have. So another thing when you're considering different batteries, is it open loop or is it closed loop? There's pros and cons regarding each, but typically closed loop is the direction I see a lot of people wanting to go. And other than that, I'd like to pass it over to my colleagues over at Lumen. And if you are interested, please contact our distributors. We have a lot of very nice fall promotions going on here. You can contact us at www.fortresspower.com or just email me at sales at fortresspower.com with any other questions if you don't get to your question in our Q&A session today. So without further ado, I'm going to pass this on over to Kevin. I can figure out. Okay. okay. I think you're good to go, sir. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Alex. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. Good. Thanks again, Alex. Uh, I, I learned a lot there. It was informative and thankful uh, for Fortress for their help in putting together this joint webinar. We're excited, obviously, to be partnered with Fortress uh, and providing some load management to their uh, to their battery system. So thanks to all of you for your time and attention. This is Kevin O'Shea. I'm co-founder and chief commercial officer with Lumen. Uh, I'll take on the order of 15 minutes of your life here. Uh, I'll go through a handful of slides to orient you to Lumen and our technology. And I'll also go through a live demonstration of our software, of the app, so that you can see how our responsive load control works. And we should be able to get wrapped up in that time frame and leave plenty of time for, for Q&A. So without further ado, we are Lumen. Um, we are a four-year-old company, just had our four-year birthday, which we're 
excited about. We're the market leader in responsive load control or smart circuits or smart electrical panels. Um, the cool thing with Lumen, you know, part of our obsession is to work really with any components of a home's microgrid. So we want to be able to work with any energy storage system. We want to be able to work with any inverter. We want to be able to work, most importantly, with any electrical panel. So you're not having to replace your electrical panel. Lumen is simply an addition to the, an ordinary electrical panel that helps make that electrical panel smart and responsive. So, um, and we're excited to, to show you what that means and, and how that works in the real world. Um, so let me page down a couple more big picture um, slides and then I'll, I'll dive into some details about the Lumen Tech and, and the box and how it installs. But what we found um, as we've gone to market here over the last four years is that responsive load control or smart circuits or a smart electrical panel has moved from being really, man, wouldn't that be nice or isn't that cute? to something that's a requirement and really essential uh, to get maximum value from your home's energy storage system. Uh, you know, the way we look at responsive load control, you know, if you invest heavily in an energy storage system without having a co-pilot or without having something to monitor your loads and automatically turn loads on and off based on, uh, you know, the status of your energy storage system, you know, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So it's it's been neat to see the market really awaken to the importance. Uh, it, it's led to, you know, phenomenal growth for our business uh, that we're thankful for uh, as we continue to demonstrate a leadership position in this market. So, uh, and then finally on the big picture side, there are so many elements to having a smart electrical panel and you know, here are a handful. We're going to focus heavily on energy storage and how we can help enable an energy storage system, how we're helping uh, installers eliminate, in many cases, a protected loads panel, how we're helping installers accelerate their energy storage sales cycles, and you know, enabling homeowners to have flexible, governed, reconfigurable systems. But... Um, I digress for a second with some of these other applications that are on our whiteboard. And the good news, once the Lumen hardware is installed, these other areas that you see here are really just software changes. So in time, Lumen will be able to do fault detection or monitor appliance health and tell homeowners when their appliances start to fail. Uh, we'll talk more about that and how we make that possible. Anywhere from that to being able to mitigate demand charges, helping to navigate complex electricity tariffs, uh, and provide grid services, uh, you know, much needed grid services, and to help stabilize the grid. So those are some of the things we have on the go and that the software, and the good news is once the hardware is installed, we can just update the software over the air uh, with these other application areas. So, um, Let's dive deeper into Lumen, into the box itself, into our platform and how it installs, how it connects to the electrical panel and makes it smart. And then we'll go through a demonstration as well. So that's our box. Uh, it's typically Lumen sits below the electrical panel. It could be to the left of it, could be to the right of it, could be behind it. Uh, you know, it's flexible in terms of wherever you can make uh, the connections or wherever you have the most space or access. 16 by 16 box, about three and a half, four inches of depth, um, and it's patented UL compliant to standard 61010 and 916. Additionally, with the Lumen box, we'll ship a grid voltage detection module, which you know, does exactly that. It determines when grid voltage goes to zero so that we can govern loads um, in, in the event of an outage and just make the system more valuable. Additionally, we'll ship with a set of 200 amp current transformers. And I'll show you what that data looks like uh, when, we, when we pull up the app. So let's talk about how it connects. We get questions about this pretty regularly and people are generally surprised with the simplicity of the connection and how easy it is to install. Typical install times between two and four hours, two hours for newer construction, four hours for um, you know, hard, more hardcore retrofit. And, Basically, Lumen intercepts the load wire. So 
we intercept the load wire, you remove the load wire from the existing circuit breaker, you insert your lumen wire in, current flows through our lumen box. Inside of the lumen box, we have electromechanical relays. Uh, we also measure current and voltage 10,000 times a second. And we securely push one second interval data to the cloud. So you get pretty much real time demand data by circuit uh, through the lumen circuits. And you guys as the installers would have access to that information as well. It's great for troubleshooting and really determining you know, homeowners needs and, and maybe even properly sizing the energy storage system. Then the second lumen wire comes out and gets wire nutted to the load wire and then you know out to the stove or the refrigerator or whatever. Typically, you're going to connect the largest, heaviest loads, typically dedicated circuits to your lumen panel. So lumen can govern up to 12 lines and the lumen units are stackable. In other words, you can have multiple lumen panels governing the same electrical panel. Very typical for us these days is to have multiple lumen panels spread throughout a house actually um, on sub panels, main panels, and they all will communicate with each other and roll up into the same interface. Default uh, communication is homeowner Wi-Fi, but we also have an exposed ethernet port uh, that you can use if you wanted to hardwire it directly to a router. Six of the 12 lumen lines can be up to 60 amp, and six of the 12 lumen lines can be up to 30 amp. So again, we can govern pretty hefty loads within a home and you know, make sure that those are under control in the event of an outage and relative to your energy storage system size. So here's a picture uh, of our Lumen Smart Panel on the left as it leaves our manufacturing uh, facilities. So we're manufacturing here in the US in the great state of Virginia, uh, both in Lynchburg and in Charlottesville. You can see Lumen comes pre-wired. So there's no need for the electrician to go inside the Lumen box. Flex conduit, about three and a half, four feet uh, length wires, both number six gauge and 10 gauge. And electricians, you just make the connections with the provided wire whips, pretty straightforward. Mount it, make the connections, commission the app, and then off you go. This is our man, Nathan, here. He was so excited with his first Lumen installation I had to include in my presentation. Um, we're installed in 36 states have uh, 130 and growing satisfied Lumen installers really uh, all, all over the country. So that's Lumen. Uh, and then from there, the software takes over and I'm gonna go through a demonstration of the software, excuse me, rather than uh, yapping about it. So let me, uh, let me transition to the software, show you how smart circuits work for real. Uh, so we have a proper app that you can download uh, both iOS and Android. Um, for installers, we, we can get you universal credentials so that if you're on site and you wanna show a homeowner the power of smart circuits, we have the ability to, to do that for you uh, in a demo environment. So that's exciting too. Um, but let's show you the control and the data and, and how it works. So transitioning to the Lumen app, Keep an eye on my time. Um, so here's typical Lumen panel installed. This is a single panel. Here are uh, the typical circuits that are connected. So really there's two aspects to Lumen that I'm going to focus on. There's data and then there's control. And I'll spend most of my time on control because it's the control that's helping our installers you know, design more effective systems, eliminate protected loads panels, and, and just provide more valuable energy storage experience for their customers. But let's hit the data quick. I'll start with some global data here, um, just to show you what's happening inside this home. This is pretty typical. Here's what's going on today. You know, if we wanna zoom in maybe to this area of interest to see what's happening in here. So you can see by circuit information, and this is great you know, to help size your energy storage systems. You can see right at this particular junction, about seven or eight kilowatts worth of demand. You can see the AC unit, water heater, um, and really get a good feel for what's happening for each of these uh, individual circuits and just help the homeowner get smarter, help you guys get smarter about 
sizing these systems and things like that. You see solar production down below. Uh, we ship with a set of 200 amp CTs. Typically those are used for the main line so you can get whole home consumption in addition to the 12 lines. So lots of cool data. Let me touch on the data again quick here and then we'll move to control. So here's my refrigerator. Here's what's happening. You can see uh, it's updating real time. So you can see currently the refrigerator is pulling about 180 watts. Uh, you can see the way Lumen captures the signature. Again, the, the detailed measurement that we do 10,000 times a second allows us to accurately capture the signals uh, for these appliances so you can know when they begin to fail um, and really see what's going on. So you can see as the compressor kicks in and then it settles down. And if I want to look at what's going on now, you can see that. So lots of really interesting by circuit real time uh, demand data that you can use uh, to help to help your homeowners. But let me transition to the control because that's really why we're in business and that's why uh, we're seeing such strong uptake in the market is the ability to automatically and discreetly control your circuit. So let's touch on um, the first level of control is what we call our level one control. So um, this is my range. If I notice that I left it on when I'm driving to work, I can just swipe left and turn it on or off. Um, so that's really the foundation for our control. You can do that from anywhere on the planet. So if I'm here in Massachusetts, my home's in Virginia, I can look in, just swipe left and turn circuits on and off. Great for second homeowners, obviously. You know, if my home's far away, I have the ability to control. So there's great safety associated with that. And that's really the foundation for our control. And from there, it gets more interesting. So you can create schedules. Uh, if you're in a time of use tariff, for instance, so you can create a schedule that says, hey, Lumen, when my power prices peak between three and eight, I'd rather not run these big appliances. Super simple to create these automations and these schedules. So I'm going to take my washer and dryer, maybe my water heat, you pick and choose which circuit you like, choose the frequency of repetition, and then the time frame. And that's really it. So you can create time-based schedules, great for safety. Great for you know time of use tariffs and variable electricity pricing. You see another schedule that this homeowner created to help eliminate standby loads or vampire loads that says, hey, Lumen, while I'm asleep, I'd rather not waste power and run these circuits. So let's go ahead and turn them off. So those are our schedules. And then the final piece is modes. Um, and modes is really what makes things probably most interesting for our installers. So what I'm gonna do here is tell Lumen which circuits to include in the event of an outage. So what I'm saying here is Lumen, I wanna protect these couple circuits and everything else is going to get shed on the order of 150 milliseconds. So we're gonna shed those big loads such that we don't exceed the maximum power output of the energy storage system and such that we don't deplete the battery prematurely. So without further ado, let's go ahead and simulate an outage. So again, we detect that with our grid voltage detection. So I'm gonna simulate an outage so you can see the performance. Lumen begins to shed those big loads automatically. You see the ones that are grayed out here. Um, Lumen has governed. And you can still interact with uh, these schedules and these modes. So, you know, Lumen has governed these big loads. If I wanna come back and, you know, wash some clothes, I can do that and I can still interact uh, with the mode. So that's, uh, that's the control. Again, three levels of control. Hopefully that was clear and not too quick. Uh, but there's on-off control interactively, you know, from the app. Uh, there are time-based schedules. And there's our off-grid mode, which responsibly and automatically um, will respond to an outage. So just uh, one or two more slides. And, yeah, then I'll shut up and let you guys ask some questions. So there's really three areas where we help enhance a home's microgrid. And the first is KW or demand. Um, so as we know, all energy storage systems have power output limitations. So with Lumen on watch and governing, you can help your homeowners. Uh, you can design more flexible, reconfigurable systems, give them access to more circuits. And our installers love it because it helps get out of, in many cases, the, the PLP discussions. 
uh, avoid a protected loads panel in a lot of cases and help you accelerate your sales and your sales cycles and, and avoid those conversations. And, you know, the other, there's two more areas and there's more, but that's all I have time to talk about is, so there's kilowatt hours uh, or gas in the tank or the capacity of your energy storage system. So um, some of the systems Alex was showing, 40, 50 kilowatt, 90 kilowatt hour system, which is great, but that's not infinite. And having something to govern the system um, is, uh, is super helpful and really helps homeowners to right size their system so that they don't have to go out and uh, you know, break the bank entirely. And uh, you know, for installers, obviously, helps with troubleshooting and customer satisfaction. And then the final piece, and, and then I will stop, is um, the ability to curtail excess solar. Um, so in situations where uh, you might have more solar PV on the roof than the energy storage system is rated for, Lumen can be involved in these situations and help govern the excess solar PV such that you don't have to do split interconnections and things like that. So, um, yeah, so I will, uh, I'll take a breath and stop talking. Thanks to all of you for, for listening. Hopefully that was clear and you know, look forward to uh, any Q&A that might be out there. That's great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, all right, so we have a couple of questions here from the audience that um, yeah. I, can, I can read through. So the first one comes from Tom Schmidt. Can you mix and match two versions of batteries in one system? Hey Tom, it's Alex. Um, so you cannot, it's a good question. You'll have to connect like batteries with like batteries. So you can't put on like an E-Vault and the LFP5 for 23 kilowatt hours. You either need to use two of the E-Vaults or you know five or six of the E-Flex units in parallel. You can't mix and match. Okay. Um, if somebody's preferred inverter is N-Phase, do we work with those? Good question. So it's be I mentioned the AC coupling. You will have to AC couple to the end phase system using one of those hybrid inverters I mentioned on our compatible inverter list. If you have a project where you're AC coupling, shoot us a message over to that sales email. We can help you out with you know, making sure AC coupling at the sizing is correct and things like that. But the simple answer is you'll need a hybrid inverter to then connect to our battery. Okay. Next question is. How do you make sure your contractor includes your lithium iron phosphate battery systems in their projects? They're thinking mm -hmm. of solar panels charging the battery system so a, a house will have an automatic backup power during power outages. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good question. So you can either work with one of our authorized installers that is an, an authorized installer of obviously Fortress Power Equipment. If there is somebody that is not a Fortress Power authorized installer, you can connect with me directly and I can connect with them and give them the proper training and setup to get them onboarded with Fortress Power so that way they can help you out with a Fortress Power battery for your home project. Okay. Uh, Ravi is asking where he can find pricing for a looming box. Hey, this is uh, Kevin. Thanks for that question, Ravi. And my email is Kevin dot O'Shea, O-S-H-E-A, and that'll be in the slides that we send out to you, Kevin dot O'Shea at lumensmart.com. If you wouldn't mind uh, sending me an email, we can get you some information. It's pretty straightforward, the pricing, but there's a couple options. So yeah, send me an email and we'll, we'll get you squared away. Great. Okay. Next question is from Mark. During power outage, if you have a battery system, can you continue to use solar power? That is correct. So typically, per the NEC code, if the grid were to go out and you had solar with low battery, your solar would shut down. But with the battery and the solar, your solar will keep producing even if the grid goes off. Okay. Um, another one from Mark. To use Lumen, is there a way you don't have to install an automatic transfer switch ATS? John Profit. Hey guys, is, this uh, is John, uh, head of applications engineering over at Lumen. So great question. Uh, if your system already has a microgrid interconnect device or an automatic transfer switch, you do not need to add one. Uh, if your inverter already has one of those, you do not need to add one necessarily. 
Uh, Lumen will work on the load side so that any circuits that you choose to back up, whether that be in the main distribution panel or a protected loads panel, we will govern those circuits so as not to exceed what your battery-based inverter and your battery are rated for in terms of their output capacity uh, and their power output. Okay, another one from Lumen from Keith. Is Lumen inter, uh, inverter agnostic? We are agnostic to technologies. Uh, there are some that we prefer, such as Fortress uh, and other quality battery and inverter systems out there, um, but we can work with any system. Okay. Is Lumen available to customers outside of the United States? We are, uh, that's another great question. We are closing in on our Canadian certification. So we expect that in the next uh, 60 days. There is some um, one-off capability in Canada to do some field testing if it's Canadian um, question. And, you know, for the Caribbean um, and Latin America, no, no problem there with availability and certification. Uh, Jan is asking, are Fortress Lumen systems available for commercial installations? I would say for any small commercial, I think that would certainly be an option. Um, Kevin, what do you think? Yeah, for us, so that's a good question. And Lumen right now today, the product that's available uh, is single and dual phase. So right now we're not compatible with three phase 208 systems. Um, our control actually will work for those systems, um, but we're measuring current and voltage today on, on two, two legs. Um, but that's another, you know, for us anyway, on the commercial side, three phase is pretty high on the whiteboard for our hardware development because, you know, it's the commercial accounts that are getting crushed with demand charges. And, you know, Lumen's a, an up the middle fit to help them uh, minimize and reduce their demand charges. So stay tuned on our side anyway for, uh, for three phase data. And today the, the control will work. I think I did. I hit that right, John Profit. Yep, you got it, Kevin. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Uh, David is asking. To be clear, Lumen connects directly to the wire serving the appliance, right? Twelve appliances equals twelve wires. Go ahead, JP. So 12 appliances uh, would actually be correct. Uh, however, we would have 24 wires. So one wire would run directly to the circuit breaker and the other wire would run directly to the load wire. So we've now intercepted that circuit on its way to the load. It, it is worth mentioning too for clarity, David, is Lumen can govern up to 12 lines. So that could be six dual pole circuits. I'm not sure if I've clarified that as well as I could have or should have. So that would be six dual pole circuits, 12 single pole circuits, or any combination thereof. But uh, a dual pole circuit would take up two lines. But And do keep in mind that you can stack the lumen panels if more control and governance is needed. Uh, John is asking if you install a lumen, if you install a lumen, can you not install a critical load panel? JP, you want to take it? Sure. Yeah, in, in many cases, the answer is yes. Um, so if your system comes or you procure a service rated automatic transfer switch where you can back up the entire house, then lumen can handle managing the loads, much like a critical loads panel would do. Uh, however, if you're only using a, you know, a 50 amp transfer switch or 30 amp transfer switch that comes included in your inverter, then you would want to install a protected loads panel or, or install a 200 amp transfer switch upstream. Um, so where Lumen comes in is on the load side. So in lieu or, or as a replacement to the critical loads panel, we will manage your demand so as to, to exceed what the batteries are rated for in the battery inverter. Uh, but it does depend and it does require either a built-in transfer switch or, or one third-party transfer switch that is service rated. Okay. 
Uh, Joe is asking, to clarify, a single lumen panel is limited to 200 amps total. Any plan to increase this? No, thanks. Thanks for that question, Joe. Um, so lumen, the 12 lines that we govern, six of the 12 lines can be up to 60 amp, and six of the 12 lines can be up to 30 amp. So we don't have a, a, a bus bar in our product. Um, so the total amperage that Lumen can handle is six times 60 plus six times 30, which 540, um, if that makes sense. Feel free to ask any further clarifying questions on that, but uh, no, it's, it's not limited to 200 amps, it's 540 total. Uh, Alex, if you can go through uh, just our standard warranty, the 10-year warranty, there's a couple of questions about the warranty. Yeah, sure thing. We, um, the warranty is 10 years. In the first year, should there be a warranty claim, it's a full replacement for the unit itself. And then after the first year, the warranty is prorated. And the warranty will go for either 6, 000, uh, sorry, 80% DOD for 6,000 cycles. Um, and there are some other options there depending on how you plan on cycling your battery. The warranty, full warranty letter in all its entirety can be viewed on our website on the resources tab. Okay. Um, another question here. What do you recommend for commercial applications, 208 volt or 480 volt three phase? I guess from my end, I think it would really depend on the project scope. Um, I've seen with both. Um, I'm not sure, Kevin, do you have any other feedback for that? I would think you could do both. I think it just really depends on the project itself. Yeah, I'd probably have to defer to John on that one, but. Uh, yeah. Sure, so on the, on the control side, you know, we can work with any voltage. It's just that third leg. We do not have a voltage measurement. So if, if you're pulling in two legs on a 208 service, you have 12208, we can both monitor and control. However, if it is a true three-phase service, uh, we lose some accuracy in our data because we're missing voltage measurements on the third leg. So that's why we primarily work in split-phase services, uh, whether it be 12240 or 12208. Uh, and then when we get into those larger commercial applications, we have another product that uh, has not been released yet that we're, we're still developing. Okay, and I think this is gonna be our last question. So um, we're asking, can I install lumen panel if we don't have a microgrid just to make efficient control of the consumptions? Yeah, for sure, and yeah, thanks for that question. Um, so yeah, we, we, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15% of our clients um, don't have the components of a home's microgrid, they're just, uh, wanting to control their energy usage and uh, you know make the world a better place and be more efficient with their consumption we also see a lot of installers uh, that are leading with lumen if you will so that they can properly uh, configure and size the energy storage system because you'll have 30 or 60 days worth of data and peak demand information by circuit um, so uh, yeah hopefully that that answer your question. Okay. Uh, if we did not get to your questions, um, I will be sending the recording of this webinar as well as the slides used to everybody who participated and who attended. So if you don't have any questions, there's going to be some contact information on the slides for you. So you'll be able to contact these uh, experts individually. And uh, again, thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. And uh, we hope you have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thanks all.